Good afternoon to you, Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. It is Sunday, the 12th of June, 2022. I thought I was going to get through the weekend without having to do a discussion video in addition to the What's Up in the Tropics that I produce in the mornings, but things are changing very quickly, so here we are. Let's get on with it. What do we got? Well, the tropics are heating up. A couple of areas to watch now. Nothing over the next 48 hours, but I think this is going to change maybe by this evening and certainly by tomorrow because the five-day outlook for the Atlantic does indicate a 20% chance of development from a system that the GFS is really starting to spin up here fairly quickly. And we'll take a look at that in just a moment. But this is originating down in the Southwest Caribbean, part of this overall fairly favorable pattern that has developed in this area and some energy coming off of South America even feeding into that. So we'll look at that closer. I believe these odds are just going to go up from here and we may end up with a named storm in the Western Caribbean before all is said and done couple of areas to watch again this is part of that overall just general large area of favorable conditions the Central American gyre and associated pieces of energy with it and so we've had this uh, high chance of development area 92 E and then a lower chance of development area here south of Central America um, neither of these posing a significant threat to Central America or Mexico yet the threat of rainfall is certainly there and we all know that heavy rainfall is an impact and it can be a deadly impact. So we will watch and see how these systems evolve. Looking at the satellite animation this afternoon, courtesy of Tropical Tidbits, this is the area that we will be watching in the Southwest Caribbean. Here's our large area of disturbed weather strung out in the Eastern Pacific. There's 92E trying to get sort of better consolidated itself. The rest of the tropical Atlantic Nice and quiet through the main development region, strong upper level winds, dry air, keeping things, and climatology, keeping things nice and quiet through there. Nothing in the southwest uh, Atlantic basin here, nothing in the Gulf of Mexico to worry about. And the remainder of the Caribbean Sea outside of this area, which we're going to be watching, obviously, the remainder of the area, nice and quiet for now. So the, so the vorticity signature here really does help us to understand what we're looking for. This is the one area in the Southwest Caribbean Sea. You get this uh, energy that comes off of these mountains here in Colombia, and sometimes that uh, combines with the easterly trades that are coming through here. And then we've got this Central American gyre that provides some westerly winds. This is kind of an oversimplification of it, but this is how you start to get everything to turn. It gives a little push, you know what I mean? So that's what we're seeing. And... Um, it looks like we may have something. It's uh, something the GFS has been kind of advertising off and on the last several days. A lot of talk about, well, it's just you know jumping on stuff and not really, it's not realistic because it was like seven, eight, nine days out. But now one of these pieces of energy is getting latched onto by the GFS and other models, and I think we're going to see something come of it. Um, it just it's got the look overall. So there is the 92E getting a, getting a little bit better organized. Still a couple of competing areas of vorticity down here uh, in the extreme southeastern Pacific. But again, this is the area. Let me just zoom in on it. This will help. We're going to watch this very closely here as one of these starts to take over and eventually move its way up towards the Gulf of Honduras up here. So you folks in the Yucatan and in Honduras, I don't think Nicaragua will have to worry about it too much. We'll see. Uh, we're going to have a big ridge of high pressure developing over the southeast, and I'm going to show you that in just a moment. Uh, I don't think this will be a threat to the lower 48. doesn't mean that it can't, but it doesn't look like it will as of now. So here's the GFS from 12Z today, the 850 millibar layer of the atmosphere, which is what I just showed you on that other analysis. That's an analysis. This is the forecast from the GFS, the numeric output. And this is where you're going to want to watch, right down here, and then, of course, over here for the Southeast Pacific. But we are going to take a look at that in just a moment on a different, like right here. We'll switch to that in just a second. So let's watch this in the Southwest Caribbean. This is 24 hours out, and then finally 36. And by 48, uh, that's when, 48 to 54 hours, that's when some of this energy starts to coalesce down here and, and consolidate. And um, it may very well do something and we get our next name storm out of it because look what happens by the time we get to 72 hours it's off to the races there just to the east of Nicaragua 
And this is a climatologically favored area down here. This is where we would expect to see development all through this area here, not out in the open Atlantic way out here off the map. This is where we'd expect to see it. So it makes sense. We have the, I mean, look, you can even see here this westerly wind that's coming in this way, the easterlies that are coming in this way. You start to spin everything. There you go. Again, an oversimplification of it, but that helps you to understand why this could happen, that it, that it's not just model, um, you know, like it's not make-believe or whatever, model antics or whatever you want to call it. Uh, then you can also clearly see a hurricane developing here. At least that's what it looks like in the model, if you know what to look for. And then maybe a smaller system, just a lot of energy over here. The tropics want to develop something, and I think it's going to happen uh, with a few systems over the next few days. So that's 72. At 96, that's only four days out. Notice something very important. This does develop. It's a smallish, small aerial coverage, not a large storm. But by this time, it would be a bona fide tropical storm at least. But then look up here. You see these height lines here, especially this one right over the Carolinas and the Mid-Atlantic and vicinity. This is like a big giant bubble of air that's developing, and that is not going to allow it to turn north. That just can't happen. So we put a big X here. It's going to be forced underneath that ridge as it expands a huge heat ridge and I'll show you some more evidence of that like some really easy to understand meteorology here and things to look for when you wonder oh am I going to have to worry about this in Florida to Texas or whatever I'll give you some clues as to what I look at and certainly what other forecasters look at as well so that's 96 hours then finally by day five you know it's headed up there into the Gulf of Honduras right off the coast of Honduras there east of Belize and the Yucatan as a whole. And, I mean, that could be a hurricane. I mean, why not? You know, rapidly developing over the next five days. We see what they can do in just 18 hours. So we're going to have to really watch this and see what other model guidance latches on or not. I mean, we don't know for sure, but uh, I think the GFS might be on to something here. Time will tell. So switching over to the eastern Pacific real quick, 92E gets going. And then it finally heads up towards, this is about five days, uh, out into the open Pacific there. So at day five, no threat of landfall just yet, but it could bring some swells and maybe some peripheral impacts here to parts of Mexico. That is, of course, something that we can watch as time moves forward. All right. So here, again, is a big clue. When you see this during hurricane season, it's almost impossible unless something gets trapped up here and comes across to get something to come from the south and hit Texas or Louisiana. It's not out of the question, but this is indicative of a huge heat ridge. This is today. And watch when I do my update in the morning how this expands uh, all across the south. Giant area of high pressure in all levels of the atmosphere just stacked up. Just a huge wall of air. A mountain of air, really. And that's not going to allow whatever would develop in the Caribbean to come very far to the north. So I think that the initial concern will be for our friends down in Belize and the Yucatan as a whole, the east coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. Got plenty of time, obviously, to watch all this, but it's going to be difficult to get this up to the lower 48. And if it did, it would more than likely be South Texas, if at all, if at all. Plenty of time to watch and see, but that big giant heat ridge and by the way, this is no joke. Again, this is today. This is the current watch warning map. And isn't it interesting, just to point this out, some winter weather advisories way up here in Montana, and then scorching, freaking like it'll kill you in an hour if you don't. I'm serious. It will. If you're not prepared, uh, heat down just, you know, I don't know, what is that? How far is that? You think maybe 2,000 miles, if that, 1,500 miles away? Wow, that's the uh, that's North America weather for you. So there you go. We'll take a look at all of this in more detail tomorrow. Uh, in the morning, early morning, I'll do the what's up in the tropics. Obviously, this will be a bigger story. wouldn't surprise me if that's orange in the morning, 40% or higher or whatever. Uh, so we'll look at that, and then I'll do the hurricane outlook and discussion, and we'll see what develops here. Interesting days ahead. All right? Have a great rest of your Sunday. As always, thanks for tuning in and giving me a part of your day. I appreciate it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share especially the notification button on YouTube. We've gained almost 400 subscribers over the last few weeks. Uh, a lot of people coming back for the hurricane season. 
So don't forget the little bell. If you want to be notified by YouTube when I post a video, you have to tell it. It doesn't read your mind. you got to hit that bell. That's not just the thing that the gamers and the million-plus subscriber YouTubers say. It is true. So, yeah, hit that bell so you get notified when I post a video, and you'll know what I know shortly after I post it. All right? Again, have a great rest of your Sunday. I am, Sunday, I am Mark Suttoth. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.